Hey everyone, it's John here, and I just wanted to shoot something um, and release it today uh, because I'm missing a brain scratch. And if you guys know my schedule at all, that is very, very strange. I think it's been a year and a half now of episodes every Friday, and this is the first Friday where I won't be releasing an episode. Um, and it's because of my little girl Molly behind me. <clears throat> Um, I was working on Brain Scratch yesterday. I have a bunch of research ready for it. Um, to be honest, I was thinking about trying to get it out this weekend at some point, just trying to get it shot and out. Um, but I'm still not feeling like I can focus. And, and I'm sure you guys know that show takes a lot of focus. Um, but Molly had been sliding a little bit in health. Um, Actually, I don't want to start there. Let's let's start at the beginning. Story, it's uh, story time on Johnny Blogs here. When I met my wife Vera um, back in 2002, she had two cats, and I wasn't really a cat person at the time. Um, she had Molly and she had Gary, and Molly was probably, I guess, three or four years old. And Gary was one or two. He was like this little white fluff ball. Um, and as I started spending more and more time with Vera, of course, I was spending more and more time with these cats. And it was very quick, very qu quickly that I learned that I wasn't as much of an anti... I, I really thought that I was an anti-cat person before that. And these two um, really just melted me down and... It was easy because um, Gary, of course, he was the young, kind of punky boy <laughs> cat, um, getting into trouble, knocking things off ledges and stuff like that, and he was just funny to me, and we, we bonded very quickly. Um, he still sleeps with me just about every night. And Molly was, she had, she had this zen thing going where you would look her in the eyes and swear that like she knew what was going on with the whole universe. She just she would have this kind of half squint. She she looked like when she looked at you, felt like it went deep into you in some weird way. Like she was looking almost almost through you, but but not through you, through you to something deeper within you. Um, And the two of them were just inseparable. I mean, they were, um, they spent so much time together, they became so close that, uh, you know, we just, we just knew that it was always going to be the two of them. Well, about four years ago, you know, the cats were getting a little up in age, and I don't know what the expected lifespan of a cat is, but I know, you know, I hear people losing cats around 16 or, or something like that and I think Molly was turning 14 and Vera and I just had the conversation that you know it would really break the other cat's heart if one of them passed away so we decided to add Shelby <laughs> the red cat to the mix and we got another boy and once again all that fun bounciness and playfulness which still hasn't gone away four years <laughs> into it um, was added back into the mix and Molly kind of took this role of being the um, older sister and just uh, there would be times where she might get a little annoyed at the boys but outside of that she was always just very loving and, and very calm and like I said just zen that's like the best word I could I could say to describe her um, there was times where I could get her kind of out of that mode she had a uh, favorite office chair. I actually have it in here right now. Just a little simple gray office chair. And she would get on it <clears throat> and I would start making these weird noises like just ticking and, <coughs> and like I would bat little parts of the chair and she would just love it. She would start shaking her head around and then she would kind of act like she's swiping at me um, and trying to you know, to get wherever I was tapping on the chair. I would, I would call her Crazy Molly when we were playing it, and we would do this 
there was a stretch where we were doing it like once a day. Um, as she got older, that game kind of wore away. I have a feeling that she lost her hearing, um, particularly over the past year or so. Um, that's one of the things that's always heartbreaking about cats is you wish you could communicate with them. You know, uh, Gary had a spell where he was really, really sick uh, a few years ago. We almost lost him. And I remember that was the most frustrating thing. I just wanted to tell him how much we cared about him. Um, <clears throat> and there were a lot of lessons with Gary that helped me with Molly just yesterday, basically, but also over the course of the past week. <sighs> you know, I mean, I, I know some people think it's probably silly to be, you know, this busted up about an animal or something like that, but these are literally our kids. We, we don't have children. These These cats are our family and my wife and I both work at home and um, they're with us you know 24 7 and it's kind of special to me that we have made our lives in this way so that we can do that it's that important to us that we're able to spend time with them um, Molly started having arthritis problems several years ago and we started buying little steps to get her to all the usual places where she would go and I wound up making a cat bed just for her. I just took one of her old cat beds and a piece of wire rack, you know, that kind of baker's rack where you put the poles in it and you stack it however high you want. I basically just made a level where her bed was fastened securely to that top rack and then it just had one set of legs under it. And that way she could always be close to my wife while my wife was working. And she used that um, right up until the last day she was here. So, um, I think a great memory that I will always hold on to is the drive out here, uh, us leaving California and coming to Minnesota. The cats were, you know, being cooped up in a uh, van conversion, a van that's been converted into a, a camper, essentially. Um, you know, my mother-in-law was there with my wife and I, and we were doing this drive uh, we planned it to be about 30 hours, but with stops and everything, it took us more like 35 hours. And uh, we were doing this whole drive to get the cats out here. I had bumped into Jackson Galaxy, luckily, um, I, guess I think it's about a year ago now, and just told him about our plans to move. And he highly recommended we didn't take them on the plane due to their age. Um, so we made this whole plan to drive them out here. And on the drive... Um, Shelby was very nervous the whole time, the youngest of the cats, and pretty much stayed in his carrier. Uh, Gary was his usual inquisitive and rambunctious self and was just all over the place. We were constantly having to go and get him, and uh, you know he's trying to climb up on the, whoever is driving and sit in their lap. And, um, but Molly just, once again, hit this zen state where we had a bed that she liked. It was actually a ledge that you attach to a window, and I just took the bottoms off of that, but I brought the ledge in and laid it on the bed in the camper, and she just found this sweet spot of laying on that bed, and seriously, she stayed there practically the whole time. She got up a couple times, you know, to use the litter box or to eat. Um, when we were at one stop in particular, I remember she went up in the driver's seat. I got a picture of her uh, in the driver's seat. But other than that, when it was time to drive, she just knew that, oh, well, we're back on the road. And she went and laid in that one spot. And she was just very, very sweet the whole, the whole time. Very easy. Um, and Vera has told me stories about traveling with Molly. She was always really easy to travel with. So, so we've been out here about two months now. And... Um, we started noticing a few weeks ago that she was losing weight. And actually, even before that, about, actually, I think it was right at the end of us being in California, she started doing this thing where she would act like she was chewing and you would hear this crunching, like she had a piece of food almost in her mouth or something like that, but it would be way after she ate. It was, it was obvious that it, it wasn't a piece of food, but we didn't understand what it was. She just... She would keep like chewing really hard and you'd hear this 
just crunching and I hate to imagine that it was bone but I don't know what else would cause that noise um, and she seemed okay you know for the first month and a half or so when we were out here but then we noticed that she was losing weight really really fast like 25% of her body weight seemed to disappear in a matter of a couple weeks and we saw that she just wasn't eating anymore she wasn't going to the dry food um, we have rituals with the cats about giving them wet food and you know they will literally go stand in a certain spot and tell us that you know it's time to feed me um, and she would go and kind of stay in that spot but when we would put the wet food down she would just kind of sniff it and leave it she wouldn't eat it and then this put us on this whole chain of trying to figure out well we need her to eat how do we get her to eat she's not going to last long if she doesn't eat so we started mixing up the food and we would have a little bit of forward momentum she would eat a little bit of it but then the next day that food wouldn't seem to work um, we started taking her to the vet and uh, he started running tests to try to figure out what was going on um, but we couldn't really we were just struggling to figure out what the hell what the hell was going on with her so we decided to try to get her jaw looked at or her teeth looked at try to figure out what that crunching thing was because we were thinking maybe she was in so much pain that's why she was deciding not to eat for some reason um, and luckily by this point the vet had given us some painkillers uh, so we were given her medication that had painkillers in it and we could notice that at least when she had the painkillers she was relaxing like outside of that she was sitting in very uncomfortable positions for a long time um, you could just see she was uncomfortable her back would be hunched she would have all of her paws really close together and her face would just be kind of staring at the ground I mean just it looked very very uncomfortable um, so we knew that there was a bit of a risk because for them to really take a look at what was going on with her teeth they were going to have to put her under and at her age I mean I've heard it from my wife for years you know I'm not I heard it mostly in relation to teeth cleaning because I guess that's a normal thing if you're getting your cat's teeth cleaned they usually put them under so they could do a deep cleaning and then bring them back up and I heard, heard from my wife for years that you know you don't want to do that with older cats and we just we hit this point of decision about we either have to try things that are going to give her a chance to get healthy again or we're just going to be watching her deteriorate further and it was her she was sliding so fast in terms of her weight loss that uh, we were pretty scared so we decided to give it a shot and to um, you know put her under so that they could really check out her mouth and see if something was going on in there and I was in the middle of doing my brain scratch research I literally had um, all the information together from a few researchers that were kind enough to submit materials to the show and I heard my wife upstairs and I heard her crying and I knew that something was wrong and um, they basically gave us the option of having her moved to an emergency care unit which luckily is very very close to where our vet is like super super close so we said yes go ahead and do that and they worked on her extremely hard to try to bring her back um, but at one point they came in and they're like look she's not really breathing for herself we're I mean she's breathing very very shallow but we're having to assist her breathing her heart rate is nowhere near where it's supposed to be her blood pressure is extremely low and they were starting to worry that her brain might have been damaged um, in some way and we don't know if that was part of the deterioration and this was just a trigger that showed those symptoms or um, if something else happened but really at that point it didn't matter we just didn't know um, what else we could really do for her so they asked us they said you know do you want us to keep aggressively treating her like this and we just figured it was time to to let her go you know she's uh, 18 years old and we had a lot of really good amazing memories with her and just even watching her over the past few weeks not be herself anymore was getting tough so <clears throat> So we got to be with her right up to the end 
and came home and just didn't know what to do. I mean, you're just left with this, all these questions and concerns and you wish you could rewind time, but even if I could, what, what else could we have done? Like, it still wouldn't have been fair. You know, we might have been able to eke a few more days with her being uncomfortable. Um, it's just, you know, you, you get hit by all these regrets and nothing feels comfortable. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to eat. You try to turn on something on the TV you can't pay attention to. You try to go to sleep and you just keep seeing images and hearing her name. And, um, so it's been a tough, I mean, it's not even 24 hours yet. And basically, I don't know um, when I'm going to be able to do this brain scratch. I'm positive I'll have one for next week, but I don't know if the one that I was planning for this week is going to come out this weekend or not. Is basically what it, I really wanted to share with all of you guys. And just, um, I appreciate you guys so much that that's kind of the dual-edged sword of being on YouTube, right, is that we wind up sharing ourselves with all of you and that to me means the good and the bad i know to a lot of youtubers they try to keep it you know to positive only and kind of control their the view of their content or the message they're putting out but um i feel a bit differently about that and i just wanted to be very honest with all of you about why um, there's no brain scratch this week and apologize for that but know that um, i would only do this in the most extreme circumstances and this is my family this is as extreme as it gets for me so um thank you guys for being there thank you for those of you that are watching this for watching this and i'm going to put a little montage here of some great pics um you know i'm just trying to keep my memories going I just want to remember all the good times that we had with her and really pay respect to her memory uh, the proper way. And I'm trying to give it enough time without rushing away from this. I feel this instinct within myself that, you know, you want to just put this in the past. Like, I couldn't wait to get to bed last night because I could just sleep and then I'll wake up the next day and, you know, I'll feel just a little bit better. And that's not exactly what happened. I pretty much woke up the next day and felt a little bit worse. So... I don't know uh, how long this process is going to be, but I'm going to pay it all the time and respect that I think it deserves. And she gave me 18, well, she gave Vera 18 very happy years, and she gave me about 14 um, pretty amazing years. So I think she deserves a lot of respect and time from me. So here's my slideshow. I miss you so much, Molly. <laughs>